Well, good afternoon and evening to everyone. Today, the subject is Paconius Agrippinus, and we're going to review his life, his virtues, and how we can learn from his wisdom and humility. I'm going to start by sharing my slides. There we go. The, uh, the resources that I used for today is of course the chapter from Ryan Holiday's book, uh, which is the lives of the Stoics. And I also found a great article by Donald Robertson on Agrippinus that confirms some of the stories and also in some cases tells the story in just different phrasing. But um, I'm gonna start with this paragraph which comes from the lives of the Stoics. It gives a good picture of who Agrippinus was. Ryan says, when Agrippinus was eventually accused of conspiracy against Nero, he found himself brought up on charges just like his father. I hope it may turn out well, he said to a friend as his trial began. And then noting the hour, reminded his friend that it was time for their daily exercise. As the Senate decided his fate, as his life hung in the balance, Agrippinus worked out and then relaxed in a cool bath. I like that story. The uh, indifference that he's showing in this story is stoic in a couple of ways. First, of course, he knew that he could not stop the trial. So he continued with his regimen and he, he was doing things within his power. He was not deterred by things outside of his power. And secondly, I think re reading between the lines I think that he also may have been using the time to work out his responses for different outcomes in the trial. I think, well, we all need time to think for big moments like this in our lives. What's the history of Agrippinus? Well, we actually know very little of his life. Uh, his birthday is unknown. Uh, we know he lived to at least the year 67, but we don't know how much further. Uh, his father was executed by Tiberius, the emperor who came after Augustus, and Agrippinus lived through the time of the emperors Claudius and Nero, who were two evil emperors. Uh, from the little that we know about his life, it seems to me that he was a nonconformist. He was very defiant of Tiberius, uh, as we know from this chapter, but also we know that he was defiant much like the Stoic senator uh, Thrasia Paetus, who was in opposition to Nero, and like the Stoic philosopher Helvidius Priscus, who defied Vespasian. Uh, we know that Agrippinus lived past the year 67 again because uh, that's the year that he's reported to be exiled. And I don't know what destination he went to in his exile, but I know that he was exiled. He had to leave uh, Italy completely. And the little that we do know about him is that he was praised often by the teachings of Epictetus. Uh, he was known in the, in the writings that uh, came from Epictetus, written down by Arian, uh, that he was praised because he rejected popular sentiment. <clears throat> All right, the lessons. Um, the first lesson that we can learn from Agrippinus is about his metaphor of the threads. Ryan captures this very well. He says, according to Agrippinus, we are all threads in a garment, which means that most people are indistinguishable from each other, one thread among countless others. Most people were happy conforming, being anonymous, handling their own tiny unsung role in the fabric. Who can blame them? Under a tyrant, the best strategy is usually to keep a low profile. Well, even though Agrippinus made this uh, metaphor, he was rebellious and he didn't mind standing out from others. So he talked about himself being the red colored thread in that fabric. That's the, the red thread, the one that stands out. And uh, he did this despite living under a Roman emperor who was corrupt. Now today we might think, well, this is all ancient history. This doesn't apply to us today, but Think about modern culture today. We have cancel culture. We can fear standing out because of that. Uh, if we were someone living in China today, we might be monitored everywhere we go. 
And who knows, maybe the whole world in a hundred more years might turn out to be like the dystopian book, 1984. Authenticity. Well, I think that Ryan makes a very profound point in the middle of the chapter on Agrippinus. He remarks that today we are, we're often describing or talking about ourselves in terms of individuality and autonomy. But Ryan um, is critical of that. He says that this could be lip service. And I mean, in a way, it's cool to stand out in ways where you're talking about your individuality, but are we actually doing it? Are we actually exercising this? I would also add that people use other buzzwords today like agency and empowerment. And what do we really mean by that? Do we just feel better using those words or do we really act upon them? Well, I think that um, it's a part of peer pressure. We can talk about this after uh, the lecture, but I think the part that relates to peer pressure is we want to be associated with these buzzwords. We want to be acceptable to our friends. We want to be popular. But if Agrippinus were here today, I think that he would advise us just to stick to the path of virtue. Um, he would suggest that we keep to rational thinking, to moderation, to virtuous acts. And it's very similar in my mind to what Viktor Frankl talked about when he suggested that we keep our character, even in the case of great difficulty. Humility. In describing the character of Agrippinus, we know from Ryan's book and from other sources that he was a humble person. Ryan writes it this way. He says, it's right to praise Agrippinus, Epictetus tells us, because although he was a man of the very highest worth, he never praised himself but used to blush even when someone else praised him. All right, as governor, uh, remember that Agrippinus was not just a Stoic, but he was a governor. And for those who like Googling, by the way, you can learn more about him by searching for his full name, which is Paconius Agrippinus. Because uh, there is another famous Agrippinus. On this map, you can see uh, the island of Crete is highlighted and the one, the Agrippinus that we're talking about today was the governor of Crete, and he was uh, living in the first century. However, the other famous Agrippinus is the governor of Thrace, and he lived in the second century. So you got to keep those two separate. Uh, also, like Publius Rutilius Rufus, who lived in the first century BC, and he refused corruption, we find that Agrippinus had a the same type of character. He avoided the corruption. He wanted to serve people. He wanted to apply justice equally across all people. And he had a good way of expressing that. Here's another quote from the lives of the Stoics. When Agrippinus was governor, Epictetus would recount admiringly, he used to try to persuade the persons whom he sentenced that it was proper for them to be sentenced. For, he would say, it is not as an enemy or as a brigand that I record my vote against them, but as a curator and guardian, just as also the physician encourages the man upon whom he is operating and persuades him to submit to the operation. Well, this reminds me today of the tough love that some parents have to give to their teenagers, perhaps suggesting them to form better discipline or perhaps earning the money they need for a new car or iPhone. Uh, I think that you know, if they give that tough love, they'll, they'll earn the money at a summer job maybe, or they'll appreciate the purchase more. I think that's a very important point. Takeaways. Well, you can look at these words on the screen, nonconformity, humility, justice, and you can see them only as abstract concepts, or you can improve your behaviors with them, you can actually improve your character. Uh, the Friday meeting of Orlando Stoics often uh, uses journaling to set our intentions and they can be used, that is journaling can be used for these three areas as well. If you were to create a set of rules for intentional living, uh, you could be better prepared for events that come your way. Uh, for example, uh, some of the events that um, 
uh, we've we've uh, set intentions for in the past where if we were to see bullying, we might say something. If we're in a Zoom meeting and there's a sexist remark, we can also say something. Uh, I can remember about a month ago, we had a very negative remark uh, in one of our discussions. We were connecting the discussion to an ancient and old religion called Manichaeism. And I think it's, um, it's a religion I don't think that's practiced anymore, but it's based on some idea of the struggle between good and evil. And someone in the meeting didn't like that and said Manichaeism was stupid. Well, that surprised me a little bit. And um, it was like, it jolted me out of my normal moderator mode. And um, I simply said, we're not putting any beliefs down today. We're just learning from each other. And afterwards, I had to laugh at myself for saying this inarticulate phrase, but I was glad that I said something right away because it had to be corrected. Now, before I move to the next slide, I will say that um, the, the book also covers how Epictetus taught us when we are studying philosophy that we should also be prepared to look foolish or indifferent. And it's okay to do that. It's okay to feel that way. Just don't pay attention to the negative remarks of others. Um, in Ryan's chapter, he also says Agrippinus teaches us that the topics like morality and justice should not be hard decisions. The things on your screen, which are abstract and can be difficult to put into action, we should instead uh, think less, think more instinctually, uh, and perhaps by setting our intentions and journaling, we can prepare for events in these areas. Okay, to wrap up today, the conclusion that I wanna cover, uh, this is when this quote comes from when the trial of Agrippinus was over and he was sentenced to exile. This uh, quote comes from an article by Donald Robertson, which sums up the scene this way. When Agrippinus was preparing to take lunch, a man brought him word that Nero ordered him into exile. Very well, he said, we shall take our lunch in Aricia, or Aricia, I guess, if you're Italian. Now, beside our modern authors like Ryan and Donald, this material goes back to the writings of Cornelius Tacitus, who was a renowned Roman historian. And those writings go back further to Arian, the student of Epictetus who wrote down all that wisdom. Uh, that's kind of the chain of the documentation, you might say. But this, this type of comment is very similar to the Stoic comment that Cato had when he responded to his death sentence. Okay, well, we've come to the end here. I, I hope that you can um, use the ideas uh, from this uh, uh, introduction today to Agrippinus. I know that we're not all facing life and death decisions or exile decisions, but if we can keep our composure, I think that we can improve our stoic practice and we can apply the things that we've learned here today about nonconformity, humility, and justice. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel to hear about new videos. Follow us on social media for more info. Visit stoicdan.com.